independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment, producer of over 400 products for cars, trucks, tractors, airplanes, and boats in 28 plants from coast to coast. Autolite makes dependable Autolite stay-full batteries and a complete line of ignition-engineered standard and resistor-type spark plugs. Products made by Autolite include horns, electric windshield wipers, relays, ignition coils, and batteries. Then there's spark plug wire, battery cable, starting motor, distributor, generator, instruments and gauges, and a complete line of ignition engineered Autolite spark plugs. In addition, there are bullseye seal beam headlights, fuel pumps, bumpers, and hubcaps. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with auto light. And now, auto light and its 96,000 dealers everywhere present Suspense. Outside line, honey. Wait a minute, can't you? Mr. Rogers and Mr. Gladwin calling. Come on, honey. I'm busy. Can't you see she's talking to Mr. Rogers? All right, go ahead, please, Mr. Gladwin. All right now. Thanks. Calling your bookies, I suppose. How'd you guess? Bonnie, Eddie, how'd they run it today? Horse racing. Wrong again, sweetheart. Dog racing. There's a difference? Of course, they got midgets for jockeys. Bonnie, listen. For the first and second, give me five dollars on mother's spare to play. And a couple of bucks on defective on a nose. Yeah, and I'll be down later on to watch him run. Picked off a 50 to one shot yesterday. Uh, but you'll die broke. Yeah, but while I'm alive, wow. Uh, for nothing, you get nothing. That's the rule of life. Look at the records. There's plenty of evidence right in front of you. Why do people borrow money? Because they can't live within their income. Because they want to get something for nothing. Never mind, pal. Ah, thrift. That's the only way to get through life. A couple of bucks ahead of the game. Thrift. Thrifty Horace. Yeah. Thrifty Horace. Look at me. Yeah, I'm looking. I wear the same suit every day for two years. All day long, I hear you squandering $2, $5, $10 on dogs. Dog. I'll be at my club for luncheon. Yes, I'll be back about three. Oh, the auditors are coming at two. The auditors? Why, they're not due until next week. I know, but they called and changed it. Well, why didn't you tell me I... Well, never mind. Goodbye, Miss Dawes. Goodbye, Mr. Maybe. Goodbye, Mr. Rogers. Uh, so long, Chief. Goodbye, Mr. Mifflin. Mm -hmm. The auditors? Do you say the auditors? That's right. Now, why now? Let me see your books, Mr. Maybe. What? Hmm, what's this, Mr. Maybe? Have you been juggling the records, Mr. Maybe? Oh, be quiet. This afternoon, he said this afternoon. 
Say, you don't suppose Mr. Rogers thinks there's something wrong, do you? What do you... You haven't been blabbing to him about me playing the dogs, have you? Maybe he thinks I'm taking money to play the dogs. Oh, don't be silly, Eddie. Don't be silly. Well, just get a little jumpy when people start making special orders. Every time something goes wrong, they always look at me. You, you got nothing to worry about. Man has worn the same suit for two years. Salad for your lunch. Oh, good. Horace. Hmm? Look. How do you like it? How much did it cost? Do you have to ask that first? I'm not a rich man. How much did it cost? Well, do you like it? Yes, yes, sure, I like it. Mm -hmm. But our dreams are over now, Cora. Send the hat back. Oh, Horace, please let me have it. Send the hat back. Mother, what are you talking about? Hmm? I'm sorry. I'm talking about you and about me, about a couple of auditors. Auditors? What's the matter? You haven't lost your job, have you? No, I still got my job. What are you talking about? About some auditors that are down at the office. They're probably down there right now waiting for me to come back from my lunch. <laughs> I can still eat lunch. Prison hanging over my head and I eat lunch. Prison? What have you done? I've tried to make you happy. Hats. Dresses. Parties. I've tried to give you everything you've wanted but... On my salary, you can't afford it, so what do you do? Yes, yeah, stealing, that's what I've been doing. Down there at that loan office all day long with money on the table, money in the drawers, money every place you put your hands and... Well, a little of it sticks. How much? How much? Enough for hats and dresses, parties, expensive furniture. Enough for almost nine years of it. Almost $25,000. Send the hat back, Cora. Send it back. Confidential Loan Company. Good afternoon. I'll connect you. Mr. Rogers. Who's calling, please? The auditors for the books. Oh, yes, just a moment. Mr. Rogers, the auditors are here. All right, right through there. Thank you. Oh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Step in this way, please. Good afternoon. No. The auditors? That's right. Hey, how's old boy here? Yeah? Uh, call Mrs. Maybe for me, will you, please? What do you want, Eddie? How'd you like to turn five bucks into 250? What? How'd you like to turn five bucks into 250? The line is busy, Mr. Maybe. Should I try again? What? I said the line 250. is busy. Please, please, one of you at a time. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, please excuse me. I, my head, I, I've, I've got a headache. Oh. What were you saying? Mrs. Maybe must be talking on the phone. Do you want me to try it again? Yes, please, would you? No, no, wait a minute, don't bother. Whatever you want. Yes, uh, what do you mean, uh, 250 today? Like that. There's a dog running at Bubbling Brook in the fourth. He's at least 50 to one. A man would be a fool to bet odds like that. A hunch, I got a hunch. 
Look, what do you do here all day long? You lend money, right? A buck for you, a buck for you, and a buck for you. You're a philanthropist. That's what you are. Uh, the Florida Confidential Loan Company was organized for Never the Never mind the prospectus. Look at the dog's name. Altruism, huh? Altruism. Is that a hunch or is that a hunch? What do you say, Harris? Five bucks on a nose. What can you lose? Five bucks? But look what you can win. 250 fish like that. I'm not a betting man. But this ain't betting. This is like money from home. Five bucks should never miss it anyway. I'm not in the habit of placing bets. Oh, Miss Dawes, can you step into my office, please? There's something I want you to do. Eddie, what's the boss? Eddie, take a flyer, Horace. Take a chance. I wouldn't push it, but this time I got a feeling, honest. Eddie, I, I've got to talk to you. I want, I want your advice very badly. You're asking me for advice. Eddie, come here. It's imperative that I get a hold of some money at once. Well, you work for a loan company. No, you don't borrow from Peter to pay Paul. What's that? Oh, never mind now. The point is that I need it very desperately. Rusty Harris, what do you don't need money for? the subject. The subject? How much? $25,000. $25,000? I've got to have it right away. I've got to have it before they finish going over the book. You didn't steal it, Harris. I have to wait. We're talking about a 20 to 1 shot tonight. Uh, do they accept bets of $500? Sure. Are you serious? Eddie, listen to me. Will you help me? Yeah, sure. Sure, I'll help you. Altruism is a dubious choice. Bring up the other four dogs, stop at a fire hydrant. Hey, who are you? It's all right, he's with me. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. Work in the same office with him. Iris, maybe. This is Barney. How do you do? No offense, pal. Just got to be careful. This cop knocked off four books yesterday. No kidding. No kidding. Town's getting too hot and I'm blown in the morning. You want to make a bet, pal? Uh, altruism. You too, huh? You must have had a talk with the rabbit. Let me see your five. <laughs> Five hundred dollars on altruism. Five hundred bucks? Are you kidding? What's the matter, Bonnie? Can't you cover it? Yeah, well, I, I can cover it, but the guy must be out of his mind. Uh, Five hundred dollars on altruism. Hello, Charlie. I want to lay off two fifty on altruism. Johnny, will you get the door? Yeah. yeah. Well, here's his ticket. I hope this baby isn't any plant. Don't worry, he ain't a plant. Sorry, you're going to be walking out of here with 250 grand and you're No, I changed my mind. I want my money back. It's too late, Fussy. You can't cancel a bet when they're at the post. They're off. That's no way to they're run a way business. They're off. Relax, Sam. Enjoy, Enjoy the race. You're going to be in a clear after this race. And if I lose? Oh, well, he was good in the fifth. Don't worry. They haven't finished the books yet. Yeah, then there's a sixth, there's a seventh, there's the eighth. Pretty soon, another $25,000. Altruism coming up. Horace, altruism coming up. He said altruism coming up. Altruism pulling ahead. Come on, altruism. Altruism. Come on, altruism. Come on, altruism. Altruism by an old and there it was. Altruism wins. Horace, altruism won. We won, Horace. Altruism.
was in what? We worked in one house. Twenty five thousand dollars. Twenty five thousand dollars. Give me my money. Give me my money. All right, now take it easy. Let me see your ticket. Let me have your ticket, Junior. Twenty five thousand. What's the matter? What's the rate? Get out quick! Well, here, give me my money. I've got that. Let's go. Let's go. Open up in there. Come on, let's go. Open up. Open up. Good evening, everyone. This is Rex Marshall for Autoland. Say, uh, before we get back to our suspense story, did I ever tell you the case of the bandit and the battery? Well, here's the way it all happened. You see, there's Harry the Hood, and he's leaving with the loot. He just jumps in his car, and he's away. Ah, uh, but he won't get far, because there's Clancy the cop ready to go in fast pursuit. Uh-oh, looks like Clancy's not going anywhere, because his battery's gone dry, and it's completely dead. <laughs> well... You see, that was the time that Clancy learned the hard way that one of the major causes of battery failure is extreme loss of water, which can mean a dry, dead battery. Well, of course, what Clancy should have had is the famous Autolite Stay Full battery, because this, of course, is the battery that needs water just three times a year in normal car use. Now, let me show you why. You see, in the ordinary battery, small particles keep flaking off the positive plates. So the ordinary battery has to have a large space in the bottom of the case to hold those particles, otherwise they'll get together and short-circuit the plate. But there's a big difference in the new Autolite Stay Full battery. Every positive plate has a fiberglass retaining mat protecting it, holding the active materials in place to reduce that flaking. You see, there's the fiberglass, the feature that gives such real advantages to the Autolite Stay Full battery. Now, while the ordinary battery requires this much extra space below the plate, the Autolite Stay Full doesn't need all that extra space, so we use it to advantage by putting it up above. Now, if we put electrolyte in both batteries, there's space left up above for extra water. But you see, an ordinary battery holds only this much extra water, while the Autolite Stay Full battery with that extra space holds over three times the liquid reserve of ordinary batteries. And that's why your Autolite Stay Full needs water just three times a year in normal car use. Well, say, friends, here's another very important fact you should know about. The Autolite Stay Full battery gives you longer life in tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. So why don't you enjoy greater safety and longer life with an Autolite Stay Full battery, the battery that needs water just three times a year in normal car use. Take a tip from me and see your Autolite battery dealer tomorrow. Remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Now, back to the second act of Double Entry, starring Virginia Gilmore and Thank Robert M. Hart. The police, open up in there. Break it in, huh? Money? Give me my money. Give me that. Let go of it! Hold it, boys. Hold it. You aren't going anywhere. Oh, Barney. Are you ready? Search him, Tom. I'm clean, baby. Clean as a whistle. Yeah. You the guy who runs this joint? No. I just dropped in for a game of bridge. Yeah, well, we need a fourth down at the station house. Take him away, Tom. back here with the money. I've got good news for you, Harris. The auditors didn't finish the books. They have to come back tomorrow. Nobody's even going to know the money was missing. Thank heaven. Only what about the rest of it? The rest of it? Twenty-five grand is yours and two hundred and fifty is mine. But I figure there's at least a couple of hundred grand in that bag. Hmm? Oh, I never thought. Well, naturally, it'll be returned to your friend Barney. Barney? 
Don't be a dope. It isn't his. Oh, neither does it belong to us. No, I'm returning this money. I'm not going to get any deeper into embezzlement. Well, suit yourself. Give me 250 fish and I'll be on my way. Eddie. I can't thank you enough. Yes, I helped you out of a jam. Didn't oh, cost me believe anything. me, my gratitude. Forget it. But I still think you're crazy for giving the money back to Barney. Yeah, no, Eddie. Here's your $250. Thanks. Goodbye. <laughs> What are you doing here? Horace Navy. Oh, you misunderstand. Misunderstand? What is there to misunderstand? Well, let me explain. Explain? What is there to explain? I find you here at night with the safe open and you stealing money. No, you don't understand. I'm not stealing oh, money. Oh, you came to borrow. No, I'm not borrowing money no, either. No, you came to give us. That's right. I came here to give you $25,000. All right, all right. I can't say that I'm not surprised. Of all my employees, you're the one man that I considered... But I'm not stealing. Oh, you expect me to believe that? Well, what are you doing here? Oh, never mind that. What are you doing, Mr. Rodgers? I'm calling the police. Please, listen. No. I stole that money. I admit I stole it. But tonight I'm bringing it back. I'm putting the money back. Can't you understand that? Hello? Hello? Give me that phone. Don't don't you give that phone back to me. Give it to me. Get off. No, 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 baby. They couldn't pin a thing on me. No, I didn't have a ticket, slip, or anything else on me. Uh huh. Well, I'm blowing town in the morning. But first, I got a little score to settle. A guy by the name of Horace, maybe. He owes me some dough. And I'm going to collect it. Right. Listen to me, something terrible's happened. There's a man here looking for you. A man, a policeman? Yeah, he's kind of tough character. He said he'd be back later. Well, the bookmaker. Bookmaker? Cora, we're in trouble, terrible trouble. What? I've committed murder. What? Cora, the police are probably on my trail already. Murder? Cora, help me. Murder who? I'll tell you. Today at the office, there was a chance to recoup. I took it. Cora, we've got to pack and run away. I don't know where. I don't... Murder who? Cora, I've killed Mr. Rogers. Well, there, was a, there was a misunderstanding. That he, didn't, he didn't know what I was doing, and I became enraged. Oh, we must run away, Cora. We must run away. Where? By where? Who knows where? I don't know. Anywhere. Mexico, South America, any place where they can't find us. Hurry up, Cora. Hurry. Hurry. Any minute now, they'll find Mr. Rogers. Then they'll be after us. Be after us. All right. We've got to get enough shirts. We've got to get pots. Horace, listen. Yes. I didn't kill him. No, but I did. I did. You're a fool. A fool. Oh, Cora, yes. I'm a fool. A fool who'll deny it. I've been a fool right from the beginning. Go revile me all you want to, but later. Not now, Cora. Not now. There isn't time. There's plenty of time. I'm not going anywhere. Cora, I've committed murder. No, I haven't. Well, I should stick my neck out. Well, everything I did, I did for you. Thanks a lot. Who asked you to? Now I've got to give up everything. This apartment, everything I like. Run away with you. Cora. No, thanks. Cora, I'm your husband. Everything I did, the bookie, Rogers, the money. Who asked you to? Oh, I might have known. Who's that guy? Policeman after me. There's Barney after his money. You won't help me. I'm not going to ruin my life. Oh, well, it's all right for me to ruin my life for you, is it? That's no problem. Oh, Carla, please. Delay him for a while. Give me time to run away, please. I told you that I'm not going to get involved. <laughs> you got yourself into it. You can get yourself out of it. <laughs> 
I know, Rogers. How do you know? Oh, it gets around fast. Guess what Rogers was doing at the office? And you're in a big jam, Horace. Yeah, I know. I'm glad you're here. Everybody yeah. else has deserted me. I've been thinking about the bag, Horace. I see you remembered to bring it with yeah, you. Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. Horace, I figured there's just about enough in this bag to keep me from going to the cops. Hey, that's blackmail. You call it anything you want. All I know is what's my cut for keeping you out of trouble. Why should I stick my neck out? You too, huh? First car, no, now you. You keep me out of this. You got Only... yourself into it, you're going to get yourself out of it. Yes, but I'm willing to keep my trap shut for this little black bag. <laughs> Last. It makes me laugh, too. All your talk about thrift and honesty and not getting nothing for nothing. Well, it makes me laugh. Give me that money. Don't you answer that door. Horace, maybe. Maybe you Right there. Come along with me, boys. All right. All right, I admit. I admit. What do you want me to do? Identify the body. All right, all right, I'll identify the body. The records show a discrepancy of several thousand dollars. On Mavis' book. I know. I know. I've been planning it for a long time. I didn't expect the auditors until next week. Mr. Rogers! This firm owes you a note of thanks, Mr. Maybe. What? You prevented a serious embezzlement from taking place. I have? <laughs> I have? You had knocked him down. He'd be across the state line with a couple of million dollars. And you'd be holding the bag. <laughs> but not this bag. The bookies told us what was in it. Come along with me, Mr. Maybe. <laughs> After you, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> you watch your step. Immediate seating in all parts of the theater, no waiting for seats. Well, I guess you recognize this fellow. He's Joe the Theater Doorman. Yes, he's a good man and he does his job well. He hustles the crowd into the theater when there's plenty of room, but he doesn't let in more people than the theater can hold. Now, let me show you what Joe the Doorman reminds me of. This right here. This is a generator regulator, commonly known as a voltage regulator. And it works as kind of an electrical doorman in your car. What it does is control the flow of electrical energy between your generator and your battery. Now, this generator regulator has three important jobs to do. First of all, it must prevent the generator from undercharging or overcharging the battery. Second, it must prevent overloading of the generator itself and its third job is to connect and disconnect the generator and the battery. Well, friend, the generator regulator is truly one of the miracles of modern motoring. And Autolite is mighty proud to have pioneered in its development. Now, each year, Autolite manufactures millions of these generator regulators to the exacting standards of Autolite engineers and the engineers of many leading makes of America's finest cars who specify them as original factory equipment. And, at the same time, Identical parts packed in cartons like this are made available for replacement use. So remember, when your car dealer or garage tells you that your Autolite-equipped car needs parts replaced, be sure to insist on Autolite original factory parts. Because you can be sure from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.